Newton held its second Indigenous Peoples Day at Albemarle Field on October 10th. Hundreds turned out to celebrate the Indigenous people along with their history with traditional dances, food, art, and speakers. You know, creating these great opportunities that many of us had to wait our entire lives. Uh, I think of all of my ancestors before me who went their entire life without any opportunity for the public to celebrate our heritage, our culture. Can you guys believe that? Can you believe that? A place called America, a place that considers itself the melting pot of all cultures, all nations from all over the world. They're here. We have Irish, they brought St. Patrick's Day. We have the Jewish, they brought Hanukkah. Christmas, even Halloween. It was a pagan holiday, but it was, a, it, was, it was celebrating a belief, a culture from another continent. And it's here, and it's, it's, it's respected. Some of these holidays, people are granted time off from work. One of those days was Columbus Day. And that was always a hard pill to swallow. I'm sure it wasn't just for myself, but many of us indigenous people on this, this land, this continent, and for those of you who are not familiar, there's a huge diversity amongst what we call Turtle Island. So this continent now known as the Americas, and I do pluralize that. It's all one continent, but for some reason, it's the Americas now. One piece of land, and that's why we call it Turtle Island. And as you will see by every one of these performers today, there is a humongous amount of diversity amongst all the nations, all the nations from north to south. We did not have a border. It gives me great pleasure to know that the land we walk on today was once walked on many years ago by my ancestors. They are the ones that created many routes, trails and pathways throughout this area. And many of these trails can still be found today. As we gather here today, we recognize our presence on the homeland of the Nipmuc people. We honor this land and all the indigenous people who were here at the time before and after the coming of the Europeans. We recognize that we are temporarily on this land and must be mindful of our impact. Like our ancestors before us, we are the stewards of this land. We have a responsibility to prevent further harm to the land and its people. We must take a moment to consider the history of violence, displacement, migration, enslavement, settlement, pollution, and all the atrocities that this land has witnessed. With this said, I would like to ask that we continue to work to make changes to heal this land from these histories. One way to help in this effort is by supporting the 2022 Massachusetts Indigenous Legislative Agenda. In the Indigenous Peoples Day Mass are supporting these bills, five priority areas currently before the Massachusetts State House and Senate. Priority number one, remove the racist mascots. Number two, honor Indigenous People Day instead of Columbus. Three, celebrate and tech Native American culture and history. Four, protect Native American heritage. And five, support the education and the future of Native youth. If we urge our representatives to pass these bills, we will have taken great steps to begin the healing process. Thank you all, and have a good day. Um. Today's action to honor Indigenous Peoples Day is taking place on the ancestral lands of the Nipmuc people. These lands lie adjacent to the ancestral homeland, various tribes, other tribes, including those represented.
gathered here today. Through over 400 years of colonization, war, enslavement, and the forced dispossession of language, land, and culture, the tribal nations that called this land home for millennia were silenced or removed from this place, now referred to as Newton, Massachusetts. As tribal nations unite here today, we honor those tribes and hopefully begin to heal as the sounds and activities of indigenous people are once again felt on this land. Katabatash. I am truly honored to be here with all of you to celebrate our second annual Indigenous Peoples Day here in the city of Newton. And I want to lift up and repeat the important acknowledgement that we have heard earlier today that this land in Newton is located on the traditional and ancestral land of the Massachusetts, the original habit inhabitants of this land that we now call Newton. As mayor of Newton and on behalf of certainly all our current residents and also the many city councilors who have joined us today, including the vice president of the city council, Rick Lipoff, I humbly pay my respect to the indigenous people, past and present, and importantly, honor the land itself, which is sacred. Today, Thankfully, a growing number of communities across the Commonwealth and across the country as a whole are joining Newton and formally and importantly observing Indigenous Peoples Day in place of Columbus Day. I am so proud to be the mayor of a city that is part of this larger movement that reflects a more complete and more accurate history of these United States. So I want to start off with a story. Um, as indigenous peoples, we are the best storytellers. And so the story that I want to tell you is the legend of Masha, a consolidated virgin. Um, and so the story goes that Masha was a giant amongst men, a benevolent being who was part of the way that we understand the geographic terrain is of what is now known as the Cape and Islands. And so in bringing us to what is now known as Martha's Vineyard, traditionally known as the island of Nope, Mashup dragged his big toe and filled in the water between the Cape and the islands. And in order to sustain our community, he would pluck whales from the ocean and slam them against the Gayhead Cliffs, painting it shades of red with their blood. He would broil the whales on charcoal pits, and that charcoal would then fall over the cliffs, also painting it shades of black where you can still find the bones and the charcoal that he once used to cook the whale. In doing so, he fed our community and also created the landscape that we know today. The landscape informs our stories and it teaches us our culture and it also holds these for generations to come. So you can imagine my surprise when the Massachusetts public school curriculum told me that we came over on a land bridge from Russia. <laughs> They told me that history began when the pilgrims landed in Plymouth, greeted by nice Indians who conveniently disappeared after chapter one. What they didn't tell me is that this erasure was a remnant of collective forgetting, a desire to forgive colonialism's necessary evils so that there were no victims left behind. I realized my peers and I stood on these different sides of history when I went to Plymouth and looked down at Plymouth Rock, which is simply a rock, a stone without any indication of importance other than the 1620 chiseled into its face. I realized then it was a symbol. It was a reminder of this collective forgetting, how they pushed us into the backdrop of New England's history of colonialism and elitism. Today, we stand here in a small act of sovereignty reminding people, everyone here today, that we are still here. 
We learn that Indigenous Peoples Day means that we are still here as Indigenous peoples in this place that tried to forget us. And we have people every day fighting through these small acts of sovereignty, whether it's using tribal IDs through airport security or collecting fistfuls of cranberries to assert our subsistence rights or learning the law so that we no longer are afflicted by the legacies of the colonialism that still run through it. The United States legal system was built on native land at the cost of our displacement and designed to eliminate us systematically. In court rulings, would these precedents still cycle through trying to remind us we are, quote, merciless Indian savages, according to the Declaration of Independence, or, quote, domestic dependent nations, according to the Supreme Court of the United States? We are still fighting to hold on to a broken promise of sovereignty alongside all of our tribal nations. Meanwhile, Martha's Vineyard is slowly going underwater as climate change falls on us due to global inaction. Our gay head cliffs are slowly turning to shades of brown and gray with increased storm severity and coastal erosion. Our burial grounds loaded into the bluffs of the southern coast are falling into the ocean and scattering the remains of our ancestors for tourists to walk by. Meanwhile, the nation's 1%, the wealthiest and the elite, are buying up all the land so generations like mine can no longer afford to live on our ancestral homelands. These are the consequences of hundreds of years of legacies of colonialism, 400 years since the pilgrims arrived in Plymouth and we're still fighting to prove that we are still here as sovereign tribal nations.